so that I have two birds now. And since I've already done the other one, I wanna do this one today. Now, if I place that about right here, <clears throat> I want to have a little more room on one side than the other. I don't want this to be positioned too far one way and I want a little space here above the head. So I'm simply going to sketch <clears throat> from my cut out bird and that just saves me time today to do the drawing and I recommend that you play with your bird sketch and then cut cut one out and do the tracing as I'm doing that today. So this can be um, kind of a formula for composing and planning your composition. Now, I, I feel like the neck might be a little thick right here, but I can adjust my drawing once I have traced the gen general form. And this has helped me place my bird where I need it to go. Um, then I can do <laughs> the rest of the sketch. just by looking at my reference. There's a little tough here. So now I have to decide if I'm going to use a background such as I used here, which basically amounted to sketching um, the mangrove. Now I had another image that I looked at, um, let's see, here, <clears throat> which helped me with the mangrove. And that has a lot of roots. And so the root system <clears throat> those of you <coughs> I'm so sorry about the coughing. Uh, those of you who've been to uh, Selby along the water or anywhere in a, in a state park, you will see how the mangrove can uh, in its root system overlap and extend down. So you can make your own design of those with some branches that might also be included in the design. So if that's the path you choose, then that would be how you design your background. I thought that I would do some grasses as this would be a heron at the river bank and I would make my water line above uh, rather than below and so that this could be um, small landscape and sky or it can be um, a vegetation. <clears throat> In this case the water and vegetation are blurry. So Hey Jim, can you bring me a cough drop? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> With the bird, I have to leave him white and I have to do everything that goes behind. And so I begin with water. And the, <laughs> literally, this is going to be water but I am doing a wet and wet approach. And I'm moving my brush so that some of these lines that I made for the grass can remain light. Now the water is going to be painted horizontally, and this is somewhat tricky, 
so I'm putting my line. Now, if I had done the mangrove, I would have also done the same thing with the water. And I would have painted around those mangrove uh, plans. This is going to be grass down here, so I don't have to go all the way down. But the water will basically be lighter than... Thank you, sir, sweetie. <clears throat> the, the water will be lighter anyway. <clears throat> All right, so this is where my water is going to go. And I'm gonna mix some blue, uh, cerulean with my ultramarine. I want the water to have, <clears throat> there's no reason why you couldn't make it more turquoisey either. Since some of you were talking about turquoise is a wonderful color. I'm moving this around where my uh, light areas, where I wanted to suggest, um, well, I think I just covered it up. All right, so I'm moving the blue through here and just keeping a few strokes on the grass that can be light. And again, I want to make these strokes come across horizontally and butt as close to the line of my bird so that I have a sharp, crisp line for the bird. And I'm moving the water now. It's trying to accumulate next to my bird. Hope my line is straight. So this is like a, a pond or a lake, a Florida lake. This is a Florida scene. I just had to move that water by tilting it a little bit. All right, and then I need to have a few little strokes of water which I can come back and add these later. But if I really want this to have the feeling of a flat pond or lake, I have to keep these strokes horizontal. All right. So I'm going to finish up by coming down and suggesting those grasses with my blue. And I need to darken right here just a little bit. So that suggests the water. That definitely says water back here. And we can do some more strokes through here when that dries. I'm going to let this be very dark up, up at the top. Um, I'm going to be making this kind of an out of focus. This is not going to be sky. I'm just using my water and you can see it. But I'm going to go fairly dark. So I'm doing a different translation from my original heron that I painted yesterday or the day before. And, and this is not to be a sky, but I'm wetting to control where my washes will go. And this I make, I will make like a blurry uh, landscape. So it's going to be trees. Now to, for the colors, I'm using my Viridian Green. And I'm using my Burnt Sienna, which will dull. I could use red. I could use um, umber, uh, but my viridian is a very bright green and I don't want it that bright. I'm gonna make another puddle of a lighter green like my uh, Skips green, that yellow green, which is now on my brush. And uh, it's, it looks a little bit abstract at the moment because what I'm doing is just making a blurry background. Now, why couldn't we do something? Um, it could be, it could be um, a different, it could be <laughs> a sunset. We practice sunsets. It could be, um, this background could be a multitude of different things. 
I'm using just a little more green and bright, my burnt sienna together. And what happens, oops, you must be careful and not do what I just did. Oh, I like that light spot. This is, this can suggest trees, but whatever goes, it's like whatever goes behind a tree or behind a beak must be repeated here. Mm. I did something I shouldn't have done with my water. I was too wet and I do want to keep that crisp. This is trying to dry over here, so I need to work a little quicker. And this helps to really pop out this lovely head of the egret. More, um, I'm mixing again with both my puddles, that, that uh, lighter green and then I'll get the darker. The darker green with a burnt sienna. I'm not sure about that white piece. Wow, that's pretty darn dark. I think I need it over here. And I'm gonna move that right next to this little spot here. And while this is wet, I do want the variation. It's kind of like a blurry, set of trees and I'm liking the way this is working here. I need to dull this bright green because it is in the background. So what we've done for the background is use wet and wet for that technique and for now I'm going to let that dry. Yes, I think I'm going to let that dry. Um, looking <clears throat> at trying to suggest um, lights and darks in the background, like the idea of a tree or trees, by getting a little texture here. All right, so <clears throat> because I have my greens in my brush, I'm going to go ahead and bring some of these strokes because I need to make them various colors. And I might end up doing a little overlap, but I don't want to do them all right now. I'm just going to do part of them. Technically, I would work light and then get darker. And I'm using the side of this flat brush, but there's really no reason why I couldn't use the round brush. All right, so I've, I've got basic levels. <coughs> Excuse me. I have basic flat color. I have, I have a background color. I have the water color, the color for the water, and I have some strokes here that need to come back. Now, I need to let this dry totally before I work on the bird. So let me do just a little bit more on the grass and patiently wait for this to happen. I'm gonna clean off my palette after I do this, and I'm gonna use my primary colors, that rose, that Aurelian yellow, rose matter, and some cobalt blue. Okay, so I did get a little darks in here. There's no reason why I couldn't use some oranges.
All right. I uh, sometimes use a credit card. If I have a long fingernail, I can also do this. <laughs> Sorry, but it just helps to uh, give texture and line pattern to the grasses. Okay. Are, are you removing paint as you do that then? I, I am. I'm actually bringing, uh, scratching through some of the dark. And if you look closely, you can really just see the, the lines. And because grass has those skinny, yes, I did move some paint. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I recommend your pinky finger for that, but if you do have a nail, it's closer by trying to find my um, Grumbacher brush that has the handle that I can use that with. All right. So while I'm waiting for this to dry and this to dry, because that's still quite wet, I'm going to put some layers in here to create shadows. <clears throat> so this is the finished um, heron that you can see shadow, and there is still the white edge. In my photo reference for this bird, I have some grays that are along the belly and through here with wisp of hair that look a little gray. I'm going to keep some white at the top of the head and kind of um, along the breast and the, the edges of the neck. I'm assuming that the light is pretty much coming from behind for that. So again, I'm going to clean off my palette and get some clean uh, Aurelian yellow to begin with and a touch of rose matter. So I'll have three little petals. My yellow, my yellow, <laughs> my <laughs> yellow, and my pink, or my rose. To yellow? <laughs> my yellow. Sorry, that's. <laughs> I like your yellow. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, sorry, guys. And your shadow. I and, love it. Uh, <laughs> it just comes <laughs> out all the time. And my rose matter is that beautiful pink and my cobalt blue. I'm, I'm actually making my puddles now because I have to clean off. You know, I'm, I'm dreadful about contaminating my color. And I tell everyone, please don't do what I do. You know, keep your paints fresh and, and clean. All right, it's just, it's just difficult when you're having fun. It's hard to stop. So what I do, is I grabbing a paper towel. I um, want to have just a little bit of water here on my brush as clean as I can get it because this is white. And I'm taking the water through and I'm not touching the edges because I decided that it was, um, I could be careful enough here. And the point is I want there to be a light edge all the way around my bird to, to emphasize that the light is from behind the bird. So I'm adding the water so that I can make these grays. And I will be softening the edges because most of the grays are gonna be kind of caught in here and uh, in the belly and along this neck. But I'll start with this very faint yellow and and you have to be careful not to add too much it is just wisping what we want to make is a gray and we're going to make the gray with the three primary colors kind of like if you had a white flower and you had shadows on the white flower so a white bird is going to stand out matter of fact i'm probably going to want to darken my background all right, so I clean my brush and I take the rose matter. The rose matter is very pale, so it does have water in it. And I'm just covering and moving my brush across, and this is done while everything is still wet. This rose matter, I picked up a little more because the shadow is gonna be heavier down at the, at the bottom of this wing and here but I'm keeping this light on the edge. Matter of fact, right now, I want to soften 
that. Then I'm going with my blue, my cobalt. And I'm gonna, where it's darkest, I'm gonna add that first through. It's just paying attention to where the shadow is the strongest. And then bringing that right here through the neck. So I've kept the bird <laughs> mostly white, but I have grayed. I, I feel like it needs a touch more blue for that shadow. And I wanted it to have more of a blue than orange feel there. Okay, and that will dry a little lighter, but it has given me the shadow. And I'm trying to see if I would want to lighten there on the breast just a little bit at the top. Yes, I think so. Okay, so a lot of detail is left to be done right now. I'm probably going to push that dark. I'm going to show you how I do the legs and um, more of the grass and the beak. So um, I'm going to switch to the little round brush and do the eyeball. And that's just done with as dark a color as I can make, which typically would be burnt sienna and cobalt blue. You know, I, I rely on local color so much that sometimes I forget the pleasure of doing things a little bit different. But I think this is dry enough for me to rest my hand. And this eye, if you examine, all heron are different. So I'm not even sure what kind of heron I have just made. And I wanted to soften that just a bit, and it has a bit of a dark spot going on. And then this line, I guess I need to make the beak, this color is about right for the dark. And it comes, there's actually some yellow, some golden color here around the eye. And the beak, you just need to paint it rather carefully. Some are, uh, some are even yellow beaked. And I wanted to have a bit of a highlight here. So I'm taking some of that back off. and giving it, trying to get a little bit of a line right through there. As straight as I can make it. And then I'll come back and add the yellow, which I probably should have done first. Here, the, the legs may have a little touch of yellow at the top, but it's a dark, almost a black, blue, blue gray, charcoal gray. And in the case of the leg going behind the grasses, I would want to let some of that green show through and hint at that bent leg. I want to, uh, this one didn't bend. And they're rather, they're rather skinny. They're not very, they don't have a lot of thickness to them. I do need to make them the same size. And I can hint that they do go down. That yellow, <laughs> that, there I am again, it's kind of a tan. So I put a little touch of my uh, burnt sienna with my yellow and I can blend that from the bird just to match up what I see in the photograph. Um, add 
that here. to uh, finish up the face. And I'm gonna add a few shadow lines. I may have to let that background dry. I'll try to show you darkening there. And with the shadow colors, again, I use my three primary colors. So I get a almost a lavender gray color. And th there is there is a definite mark that's made with the wing. I added a little more blue, which I felt it needed. I'm suggesting the uh, again the crease in the material here. Oh, I have placed my finger right here in the grass where I didn't need to do that. You have to lift it quickly if you make a mistake. This is a little heavy. So is that. And there is a line here. All right. I, I, <laughs> I'll lighten my, my touch but I do feel that it needs the suggestion of the feathers. It helps to give detail in the bird. And um, just that variation that we had with, between the, the yellow and that blue, purple, black helped to those legs. Uh, I wish I could give Stu something here for a little more expression in this bird and maybe just darkening the beak And maybe doing a little bit with a background. Oh, I want to talk about the water. So the water does need some strokes. And again, using the same blue um, cerulean and ultramarine. And I start lighter. Sometimes just creating some bands and then, and whatever you do, on one side must be repeated over here. Without touching your bird. Your strokes in the background should be smaller strokes. And as you move forward, your water strokes should get a little more uh, accentuated, a little heavier. A dry brush works, keeping your strokes though as flat as you possibly can get them. I have this water fairly light, so I can keep building this up. Sometimes just suggesting it though is um, good enough. I'm using a little bigger brush. And water, symbols of water are just really some nice wiggle lines. Just as, and matter of fact, when I did the water here, you will notice that I did a lot of centrifugal uh, circular forms and a shadowed under the mangrove here. And I did the same thing with the water on this particular one where I just dabbed and I used a sky in this one. So it was a lot of blue. Um, here I want to go darker and then I'm going to stop. And uh, I'm just going to do a little bit so you can see how dark I would be brave enough to go. And I feel like it does need that darkness. Now around the beak, maybe I wanna keep some lightness in this area. So a transition might be where I keep um, that edge against the bird 
and I work here. And I'll do a little transition here in a second. Then I'm just going to add some water. And keeping it light around the bird beak is, is smart because that helps the bird silhouette to, to work. Whereas we want, we want this bird to have um, control of the space, be kind of majestic. I need to work right in here a little bit, although that's part of the bird fold. A little drop brush. Okay, I like that dark better. I also want to balance what's going on down here with some more darks. It needs contrast. And I still need a, quite a few more strokes that come up through here. And at this point, you can overlap the bird. The bird can even be, you know, somewhat hidden uh, in the grasses. Okay, and I, I wanted to add some orange and, uh, you know, some browns here. Something, actually a little color wouldn't hurt. A hint of that orangey red. We could have some dry stalks through here. Well, it's a little heavy. I'm not sure I like that at all. Soften them down. If I'd gotten them a little skinnier, I would have liked them. Okay, maybe I don't like all that brown anymore. I think I want to go back to the yellow green. And I, I'm, when you're wet, you need to stop and let it dry and then come back. So. Okay, let's see. Do I need to make this line any darker here? Maybe. And then I think, yes, I, I like that. I think that needed to happen. And uh, one other thing I'm not, I would like to have a little more water up against the bird. Uh, and I might just through here make this a bit darker with, uh, oh, I know I was going to do some little hairs, some um, feathery things coming off, but maybe this is the female, so it wouldn't be quite as. Okay, guys, I think that I'm going to call that done, whether it is or not. I've spent too long anyway, but I hope that the demo helped. Pardon my earlier coughing. Jim brought me a cough drop and it made a difference. So with that, I will say happy painting.